In this video, I will show how to change the magnification for the various lenses, as well as some examples of specimens and appropriate lenses to use to image them based on their size. So let's start with the 100 millimeter lens. This is an often used lens for uh, smaller specimens. Uh, let's attach the lens and then you can change the magnification by turning the dial on the lens. So here's the lowest magnification, 1 to 5, and then um, all the way to 1 to 1, which is the highest magnification. And you can see on the lens, it is the yellow text that's in ratio format, which will let you know what the magnification is. As an aside, you can change the aperture um, for the um, camera by turning this dial on the top um, and you can see it change right here. So the magnification uh, process for the 50 millimeter as well as the 35 millimeter is very similar to the 100 millimeter. So let's go over how to change the magnification for the 65 millimeter which is slightly different. So let's attach the 65 millimeter. And so to increase the magnification, you change the dial, same as before, but instead of a ratio format, it's in a multiplication format. So here, the lowest magnification is 1x, and then as I turn the dial, it increases the magnification 2x all the way to 5x, which is the highest magnification. So, if you are imaging something and you need to increase the magnification a bit and you have already gone as high as you can, you can, in, you can attach this uh, 1.4x teleconverter. So, it's basically an extension for the lenses. So, simply attach the teleconverter to the lens and then line up the red button as you would normally and you can tell it um, how to put it on uh, correctly because all the text will be upside down. So here is the 1.4x teleconverter attached to the 65mm and it just increases the magnification of the lens 40%. So it's really good for if you want high quality images that are just a bit more magnified. So let's take this apart. Um, there's a side release button. Turn the 65 millimeter until it releases. And then press the side release button to um, take off the teleconverter. And then set aside. So now, let's go over how to tell which type of lens you should use for the size of the specimen you have. So here is an entire drawer of specimens, several dozen of them, and this is a very large image to take. So the best lens to use, in my experience, is the 35 millimeter. So for anything smaller than that, it's best to use the 50 millimeter. And here's a 15 centimeter uh, uh, scale marker to give some sort of uh, reference. And so here we have two large shells that are larger than my hand, as well as a large butterfly. And these would be perfect um, to be imaged using the 50 millimeter. Now in uh, decreasing order of size, here's um, a shell that's about four to five centimeters, as well as some uh, smaller beetles uh, between a centimeter and four centimeters in length. And these would be perfect to be imaged using the 100 millimeter. It'll get the entire specimen in frame, as well as the option of being able to zoom in a lot uh, for details on those specimens. So here are uh, some very small specimens, some very small insects uh, between a centimeter and several millimeters in length. Um, 
and these would be good to be imaged using the 65 millimeter. And here we have some uh, conifer needles that um, using the 65 millimeter you can zoom in quite a lot and get a lot of detail of individual cells on the needles. And then here is a microscope slide that you can either use the 65 millimeter or the K2 microscope. So you may ask yourself, the K2 microscope and the 65 millimeter can both image specimens of similar sizes, but why would you use one versus the other? Well, for all of these specimens, you could use the K2 microscope and you would get, uh, it would take slightly less slices to get the entire, uh, entire specimen in focus. But the quality of the K2 is a little less than the 65 millimeter. So if you were either pressed for time or you had a very, very small microscopic image, you would want to use the K2. And this slide would probably be better um, being imaged using the K2 just because the specimens are very, very small, only a, a millimeter or two in length.